Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where today we're working on Gleety's replacement. Uh, if you remember, Gleety was my sort of moon lander and orbital science base uh, that wasn't really made for the moon. Um, now that I've stopped and thought about it, we're sending it off to Minmus, and we did that last episode. Right now, I'm spending the little bit of science that I had left over, and it turns out I actually went for the miniaturization equipment, because, you know, that was... Just, I, I just thought that was going to be more useful. Those tiny rockets. Mm, I love those tiny rockets. Anyway, what's happening here is uh, we've just done Gleety's uh, change of sphere of influence. Change of sphere of influence. Yes, that, that, that's, that's right. Uh, and as always happens at this time, I decided to try and make sure that the ma uh, maneuver node was still lined up. And in the process of doing that, I unaligned the maneuver node which is always good but it's okay that was the time we needed to do it so we put in a uh, an alarm clock and we went to launch this this is my monster core or so i have called it um obviously it's going to be the core of my space station uh, i've gone for kind of the central hub with the spokes design uh, any of you guys that follow sort of sci-fi tropes will know what i'm talking about so the design of this hub um, is basically there is a probe on top with solar panels underneath uh, reaction wheels top and bottom then we've got um, a, a, a medium sized fuel tank you see these white ones that the outside of the, the ship has been made out of these things there's one of those top and bottom surrounding an orange one and lots of monoprop as well so basically the, the, the internal hub is fuel storage you can just about make out what's what's going on there there's, there's a few twiddly bits there's a comms unit there's some like adapters to make it look nicer but in essence this is just a load of fuel tanks with some docking ports around it uh, okay so first staging went well that was amazing i managed to dump all the debris into uh into the ocean which is better than leaving it in space because you know no one likes to crash into stuff uh, and now I'm struggling with gravity because I've, I'd waited too long basically to, to refire my engines. I forgot these tiny little things around the outside would take so long. Uh, so we are currently plummeting back down to the planet, which means we need to stick our nose in the air and kind of thrust up and try and try and lift our, our, our upwards velocity, uh, our vertical velocity into plus numbers instead of crashing back down which is slowly but surely happening uh, and then once we have that sorted we need to point forwards and circularize our burn which i think is going well we're about halfway there at the moment uh, and just watched our, our debris disappear um, just at the time the apple apps caught up with us and we can just make ourselves into a nice circular orbit like this which is taking a little bit of time but there we go it, we're, we're now done uh, the only thing left to do now is set up a maneuver node uh, put out some uh, solar panels and then look around for said manoeuvre node uh, and once that's sorted which should be relatively quick just like that um, we need to go around perform that manoeuvre burn uh, which I think I'm going to jump cut to because you can see the manoeuvre I'm going for here uh, or indeed as I've now stopped messing around with the manoeuvre mode we'll, we'll, we'll watch me turn the ship round we'll do some time acceleration for the next uh, 16 minutes which doesn't take all that long um, it takes about that long in fact and then we point on and thrust forward the moon is not quite rising yet but it's very close to but then I am a man known for my premature thrusting and all we need to do is ease up a little bit and help power through later on in the burn and with all that we are left with a relatively close um, close orbit to what I was going for you'll see there that we've got a uh, an encounter of less than a million meters which uh, I count as a good thing um, then all we need to do is once that's set up set up an, uh, an alarm for us and move on to our second launch so this is a moon lander we have a docking port on the front a cockpit underneath that then we have monoprop uh, reaction wheels two science bays you know the materials bays with the goo canisters the seismic readings a temperature probe uh, and a variety of fuel tanks and engines to get it up and down from the moon. Uh, the, cent the lifting stage was quite an easy one here. We just had some of these uh, double-engined rockets. I can't remember what they're called, but we had a, a small cluster of them around the outside, a small cluster of four around, around the outside, and then each one of those had two of those massive solid boosters on it, which meant that my uh, angle of approach to orbit here was very steep. 
Uh, I pretty much went straight up. Um, after dumping all those big engines and watching them come back down to, to Kerbin, I realised that this one tiny engine on the back here just really isn't going to cut it to get me circularised. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame, but at the same time I have kind of allowed for this by putting those extra rockets around the outside. It's about here that I'm realising that it's really not going to work, even if I nose up and, and stuff like that. Um, so I rearranged my staging a little bit, hit spacebar, and there we go. Away we go at four times the speed that we were going a second ago. And with those extra engines burning, it doesn't take us long to get into a, a semi-stable, semi-circular... Semi-circular orbit? No, that would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? You'd have a curve and then a straight line through the middle of the planet. No, that would never work. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so once that's all done, I start moving all the fuel from the back stage up to these uh, front engines here, because let's be honest, these are the ones that I want to have all the power when we get to the moon. Uh, I, I shut them down because, well, basically I wasn't thinking. I was like, oh, we'll just do the rest of this on the single engine at the front. I've not, I've not got any any danger of crashing back down to the planet. And no, I did not have any danger of falling back down to the planet. The danger I was facing was boredom. Uh, so you'll see here that it tells me my estimated burn time is 1 minute 43, but that is the estimated burn time for all four engines, which means that it's gonna take, you know, six minutes or so, I think that's that times four, um, to make this singular singular burn, or this burn with the singular engine. If we, if we watch when I throttle up here, six minutes 40 odd seconds now here i have learned what my threshold for boredom is it turns out it's five minutes i didn't realize this at the time but now i know knowledge is power and i'm ahead of the game right so with all my engines burning we're just going to uh work our way through this maneuver node uh it's a nice simple process as always point at the blue cross watch that green bot green bar drop down go a bit more gently when you're near the bottom so you can make sure you're as exact as possible uh, and watch the beautiful sunrise. Uh, Bob Kerman, of course, being the one to step up here and take over um, th this mission. Of course, Jeb is out in Gleety on his way to Minmus as we are speaking. Uh, but there we go. This this guy's going to the moon. We've set another alarm clock and off we go. To find out, I'm completely out of money, which is not great. So it's time for some crash commercialism. Uh, we need to go see Gene and see what he's got for us. Now, I'm getting really worried about Gene. He's always drinking coffee, and that little left hand of his is twitching away so hard. He's either got a severe caffeine overdose on the go, or he's starting to get a little touch of Parkinson's. I don't want to bring it up with him, because it's not the sort of thing you talk about, is it? But, I don't know, maybe it's time for an intervention. Be like, dude, you got to ease off the caffeine. But anyway, after searching through all my, all my uh, contracts, I decided to take this one. It's uh, testing the, the, the four cluster engine. Uh, gives us ridiculous amounts of money nearly nearly a million kerbal bucks and another 200 signs which would be useful so in the VAB I start putting together everything that's needed for well for everything really uh, I, have, I have my um, contract screen open up or my contract note open up there to tell me exactly what it is that I need to put on this vessel and as it is literally just that engine and some way of controlling it uh, I think we're gonna cut ahead to see what what came of this building process um, it's not too much different this different in fact that was obviously not my final design uh, I'm not sure why everything fell apart um, but one thing I am sure of is why this didn't work I was missing one of my uh, fuel lines which meant the engines were burning incorrectly uh, not the, the fuel tanks were opening everything incorrectly and we ended up with this horrible mess uh, though thankfully everything that I needed to test was still there and the probe body survived so that's all good but anyway after a few tweaks we ended up with this design which uh, I think is going well. Uh, all the orange tanks around the outside are asparagus, just so we can save fuel and parts costs and get the, the, the maximum profit out of this, this venture. After all, this is the entire reason I have put this thing up in orbit, or I'm going to put this thing up in orbit. Uh, you'll notice that I'm now putting separatrons uh, on my left-hand side with my, with my stage now. You'll notice separatrons now go with everything. I'm not sure what happened, it was either the point uh, 24 or the point two four point two update where suddenly um, the couplers were just well for me at least um, they were acting rather strange that suddenly everything kind of like p 
pivots inwards as it gets blasted away which means that it smashes into the internal fuel tanks or the next layer in which all goes hideously wrong uh, but anyway we're up at orbital um orbital altitude now and all we have to do is try and ease ourselves into a, a, a nice circular orbit or at least one that the game recognizes as an orbit and put in some um rather easy easy commands uh the, the command being that left click there um so we got all our money that's great so now i want to put this down on top of the, the space center uh, i put down a marker and we time accelerate our way all the way round orbit now the more observant of you would have noticed an issue here already and we're just about to encounter it uh so i want to start turning my vessel around apart from i've got no electric charge i'm like oh no oh everything's pointed in the wrong direction there is literally no way that i can save this until kerbal like uh, yeah kerbal the planet ends up in a different position around the sun so that the sun is somewhere else relative to the spacecraft either that or i'm gonna have to build another ship all right anyway to, to go up and knock it anyway we're gonna spend some science in here uh so i'm uh umming and ahhing between these plane parts and the better landing legs uh, I'll tell you now, I take the better landing legs because landing is what I do more than flying spaceships. Which brings us to this, the fourth and final launch of this uh, entire project, I suppose is the way to word it. Um, this is the science core. There is a science module on there. There's a couple of adapters. Uh, there's even uh, a little uh, micro brain at the back to, to fly it around. Uh, you'll notice that immediately my decoupling went badly. Uh, this is the theme of this launch. This launch was just horrendous. This is actually like my seventh launch. Um, nothing really all that spectacular happened. I can't really show you any good footage. Um, but it, it's things along this. So this thing was perfectly asparagus up with a nice little snaking line back and forth. Unfortunately, like the second decoupling smashed off some of the middle, uh, middle fuel tanks there, leaving me without the decent um, fuel feed system. So with... But as I said, this was so ma so many launches into the system that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna push through. There there appears to be enough fuel here. Nothing got horrendously unbalanced. Um, when when things broke, they broke in pairs, which is incredibly useful. Uh, so I was gonna give it a go. We're go we're gonna try it. Um, hopefully, we've got enough fuel. Uh, I say hopefully because at this point, I really didn't know. Uh, you'll see at the bottom there, we've got the little little. Um, brain bot is what i called it the one with the toroidal fuel tanks on the bottom uh, and with this nice circular orbit as is becoming the theme uh, i set up a maneuver node off to the moon complete said maneuver and then set an alarm clock uh, to tell me when we're going to be entering into the manula space unfortunately that was an easier said than done proposition my first issue is you'll see here i am in the dark side of the planet and i've got no electric charge um i'm not sure what gave me that bit of electric charge there well at least not at this moment in time uh, i do go and figure it out eventually but right now i am in a lot of problems so i had enough electric charge to uh throttle up but i can't throttle back down and now my ship is spinning around uh at that point i noticed the when i went to my map view i got a little bit of um little bit of electric charge so i just spammed it up there to get a little bit more control and when we came round to the sunrise uh side of the planet pointing myself in the right direction and just just went nuts uh once again decoupling went badly uh so we had to um just jettison the bits that got broken again wasted fuel uh it just uh, yeah this this mission Oh my god guys this you can hear it in my voice i didn't even know how to describe how badly this this particular launch went it's not even the mission it was just this one one little bit of this entire mission uh, but yeah anyway with everything taken care of we've now got a, a fairly good manular encounter and for once something went right all my other launches went to the, equ the equator but this one managed to hit um hit the polar orbit which is where we want okay so now we've got all the uh the the batches of the moon encounters to do uh, or at least the capture burns and if you really really want to know how that goes you're gonna have to find out next time because unfortunately i have run out of time uh i will see you next time when we are gonna do all that you can see the list on the alarm clock what we've got set up to do it's a busy one so i will see you then bye